Hi everybody, Deborah Lynn here in the studio. Are you guys ready to have some fun and play with some purple? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, I have got my Magello paints out. Of course I have my Magello paints out. I love my Magello paints. If you want to know about Magello paints, go ahead and go into the description box. You'll find links to the Magello and uh, check them out. They're fabulous, highly pigmented. So if you love to do flowers, perfect paint for your flowers just saying so click on those links they'll take you to amazon and make a small commission and that helps me continue to do what i'm doing and buy some supplies to keep pushing this art out here for you guys okay so now i've got quinacridone permanent magenta and endothrome blue i am using a large filbert's brush and this brush is, I'm just using my wrist to kind of roll the shapes around and just lay flower shapes down. I'm not overthinking, working quickly, not overthinking, kind of putting it in little random areas of where I'd like to see the flowers. And now I'm going in with my wet quill. The paper is dry. Now I'm going in with my wet quill and I am bumping edges. And when I say I'm bumping edges, that means I am releasing the pigment and it is following the trail of that wet quill brush. And so that loosens everything up. I am now getting out my um, Van Gogh dust colors. So now I've talked about the very vibrant paints that I'm using. I also use a um, M. Graham, a Azo Green, I think it is. Um, so I end up using very vibrant colors, but now I'm also gonna be using these Van Gogh dust colors. If I know Van Gogh is probably more of a student line, but some of these, their paints are pretty cool. They granulate really neat, and these dust colors, just get them. Just get them for your studio. They're fabulous. They uh, do really beautiful things in your painting. You're going to see how it takes this, this very vibrant painting and kind of dumbs it down a little bit and makes it a little bit moody. So a really cool juxtaposition between those colors. So now I'm going in and I'm using that dusk yellow. Now the dust, they say it's dusk yellow, but it's like a really kind of dark, dark, dark green color. Um, so I don't know how they come up with yellow, but I'm not gonna fight them on that one. I'll just order it. And I'm just making random thin, using my liner brush. I'm just using that liner brush and I'm just taking it from the base of the flower and just trailing it kind of down not straight stems, I'm just kind of making them, um, you know, so they look, yeah, have you ever noticed like a poppy, you know, they're never really straight, they're just kind of weird and organic shaped, um, so I'm trying to kind of give movement to this painting. So now I'm going in, I'm bumping edges on those, um, on those stems. Now, I want this to feel very light and airy and ethereal. So think thin um, stems, okay? If you put chunkier stems on here, you're gonna get a completely different feel of flowers. So um, just keep that in mind. Now I'm just rolling my brush. See how I'm rolling it? I just roll it in my fingertips and I'm just kind of rolling that on the paper. Um, and it's mixing with some of the wet areas and some of the dry areas. So I'm gonna get two kind of effects. And now I'm just going in, I'm just splashing in some um, of that violet. Now there's a lot of water in that brush. I pick up the pigment and then I shake it on. Now this is, this is hard to do if you're using a synthetic brush or if you're using a, like a size 12 round or, you know, it's, it's really hard. You almost need one of these to make these kind of nice big splashes of paint. You're going to need to invest in one of these quills and they're not expensive. Don't tell anybody. They're not expensive. 
go to the description box. It'll take you to Amazon where you can pick up one of those. Everything that I'm using is all in that list there. If you click on those links, I can make a small commission and I can continue to keep putting these paintings out for you guys. So check that out um, and uh, pick up one of those brushes. I mean, now I'm gonna say that. Now all of a sudden, no, there's not gonna be any of those brushes because everybody's buying them up. <laughs> It happens. Supply and demand. So look at how pretty and ethereal this is looking. I just, I, I know that as I'm working on it right now, it's like, I can't mess this up because this is looking really pretty. And now I'm going to just, and I'm going into this danger zone. It's like, okay, now I got to add this. I got to add this azo. And what's it going to do? What's it going to do? And I'm using these, sorry, I had a, a message come in. Um, skinny palette, pointy palette knife. This helps me stay very loose, but it also can help me kind of put like precision points in a little bit. Um, so if you've never used a palette knife when watercolor, with watercolor, you're missing out. I, I, you know, I have watched other watercolorists on here for years on YouTube, and I have never seen anybody use a palette knife, knife a, use a palette knife knife. Um, if you have, let me know. Um, I'd like to see how they go ahead and manipulate their stuff. Um, but I do a lot of landscapes. I've got some landscapes out there in my YouTube world where I use a palette knife and um, get some really cool effects. So um, do check them out and do get yourself a palette knife. You just have to be very, very careful with the palette knife with paper because you can score the paper. Look at how I'm rolling that brush, okay? Um, so you stand when you're painting also. Sitting, you, you can't get the right range and the, quite the right motion with your arm. Um, you want to be able to roll your arm and twist your wrist. So you keep that in mind. You're gonna get a different look when you're sitting. So just go ahead and just say, okay, I'm just gonna stand at this at this desk and I'm gonna I'm gonna try what she's saying. You'll be surprised of the difference between sitting and standing. So now I'm just going in and doing some uh, just some um, splashing around because my name's Deborah <laughs> and that's what I do. Okay. Now I did go in and I did blot some stuff in, I blot a few areas. It was just some areas that were kind of, there was some puddles forming. So I just went in and blotted that and I cut that out because my head got in the way. So, um, but I did go in and just blot just a couple areas there. Just control the water that's on your paper. If you're seeing puddles sitting there, go after them. Grab some one ply paper that doesn't have a print on it and go after it and pick it up. Because it's all about controlling water with loose water coloring. You have to learn how to control the water. Now I'm going in and I'm intensifying these stems because I kind of lost them now, didn't I? With all the splashing around and stuff, I lost them. I have to build them back in. And remember, I went in and you didn't see me do it, but I went in and I kind of grabbed a little bit of those areas that were kind of had some puddles and I kind of picked that up just ever so slightly. I didn't want to overdo it. And I picked them up so that I could go in and, and continue and build this next layer. Now I'm going in and I'm doing mark making. Now this not may not be for everybody. This is just an aesthetic that I like in my art. Um, uh, I just, I, I like the feel of it. Um, and I also like that moment where I can just be free to just let my brush travel through everything I've just painted. You know, some people might say, oh my God, you're ruining the painting. I, I don't know. There's something about just like scribbling over it. Um, but now I felt like it was a little bit dark with the dusk yellow and I'm just kind of dumbing it down a little bit by just hitting it with the, with the quill there and just, I'm not getting rid of it. I just toned it down. So pretty much this is my painting, you guys. It was fast, effective, and fun. So 
I, I hope you guys liked it. Please leave a message in, um, in the comment box. That definitely helps me with my analytics, you guys. I know you guys don't know anything about analytics, but it helps me get out there in the community. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and God bless, guys. Bye for now.